Well, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Aaron of Christ Church, and you are watching Daily Bread, a short daily devotional to help us fix our eyes on Jesus. I've been a pastor for more than 20 years, and I'm doing this because it is my hope and prayer that God's people, despite COVID-19, would stay connected to the body of Christ and to the Word of God. This week, we'll be looking at Paul's teaching about rejoicing. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4 and verses 4 through 6, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When Paul, What Paul wrote about rejoicing would have been remembered by the Philippians because what had happened 10 years earlier, you remember that the Philippian jailer and his household repented and believed, and Paul and Silas were in jail rejoicing. Now, 10 years later in Philippians 4, Paul is writing to the church and reminding them from another prison that they, in their circumstances, are to be rejoicing in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And that's what I want to look at this morning. I want to go back 10 years earlier from the book of Philippians to the book of Acts. And if you have your Bible, you can follow along with me. I'm going to be reading from Acts chapter 16 and verses 16 through 25. Luke writes in Acts chapter 16, Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirits, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. About midnight, Luke says in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Have you ever wondered what kind of hymns Paul and Silas were able to sing from memory after being beaten, imprisoned, and now at midnight? We'll look at this later this week because I think that what Paul says about rejoicing in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice that there's a connection between what Paul and Silas were singing and what it means to be rejoicing in the Lord always. But for today, I want you to note that what Paul wrote about rejoicing and where he wrote about it from as he was in prison, this is also for us today, 2,000 years later. In fact, as I've been thinking and meditating on this passage, I think that right now, Paul and the other Christians at Philippi are now rejoicing in heaven to see how these words, how God's word in Acts 16 and in Philippians, how it is now being proclaimed to the ends of the earth. That's a cause for them to rejoice and a cause for us to rejoice and also to have hope. So every Christian, not just Paul or the Philippians, Every follower of Jesus is called, no matter what our circumstances might be, to rejoice in the Lord. 
And that's my prayer for you today. So that's our daily bread for today. Tomorrow, we will begin to look at some practical ways that we can rejoice even when we are suffering, imprisoned, quarantined, fearful, or anxious. You can start today by rejoicing in the Lord by not being glued to the news. Start memorizing and meditating on Philippians 4.4. 4. Well, everyone, it looks like I made it through an episode without Maggie or Abe or any of my other children sabotaging the show like Abe did last time. So I'm really thankful that I was able to make it. And as we uh, close now, I'd like to uh, pray that you have a great day. And wait, what, what's that music playing? That's, that's not the right music. I, I had the psalm supposed to be, I was going to be playing Psalm 23. How, how do you turn this thing off? Hey, who's that behind me? <laughs>